press at uh, next retail. Obviously, the uh, the retail industry has also uh, had a, a huge migration online over recent years, and Next have been at the front uh, of that for, for decades. So, so Chris, in in terms of your view of uh, the, the workflow and automation within Next Retail, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, since uh, first of April, uh, retail you know has been a bit of a disaster zone. Uh, bricks and mortar retail has been a, a disaster zone. Um, so, kind of as soon as that happened, we were we were plunged into into a bit of a chaotic situation. Um, from a workflow and automation perspective, obviously our online business carried on, um, and our online business has grown and grown and grown, particularly around the home, uh, the home goods uh, uh, sector. So we do a lot of, of sofas, soft furnishes, and things like that. And and yeah, it, that side of the business really took off. Now, from a, a specific automation perspective, we used to leverage the bricks and mortar business uh, by having a lot of our online orders delivered to stores. Now, we had to very quickly kind of change that that strategy overnight, really, to say, right, we don't, we want, we need to stop people going into stores to pick up parcels. One, because from a, you know, a COVID perspective, it was irresponsible. Uh, and two, because because we needed to get the orders, um, you know, out of our warehouse and, and to 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 people uh, as quickly as possible. So we we had to make quite a few uh, very rapid changes around our print production and automation using obviously we use RPD um, to 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 manage our our automation. So yeah, that was that was a huge challenge that that came at us. Kind of, you know, it's a bit of a blind side. Although I think we did quite well. And then, similar to the guys at Leeds University, you know, lots of other challenges have have come out as we've tried to open back up the the um, the retail and the warehouse space. So, you know, Im immediately from a print perspective, um, you know, we had to get all the signage out there. We had to print half a million red dots and two meter stickers and other bits and pieces. Um, and now to a point where that's all bedded down, everything's back open. But we're looking at how we can allow our stores to self serve. A lot of their print requests so if they do need some additional signage or they do need some additional screens or whatever it is that they can come to one place that that's definitely something that has been accelerated over the last few months something that we always wanted to do but has definitely been accelerated over the last six months yeah and if you go back before covid you know what what were the main drivers of automation and, and, and from a retail perspective you guys uh, design differentiation into your business with some of the best uh, retail applications. So, so where did the automation piece come into output? You know, w within that sort of mix, you uh, I can never. You've got hundreds of developers, and yeah. but ultimately, right? There, there's with a big retail operation like ours, automation is driven through two main two main pieces. The first piece is around. Um, I suppose complexity. So the amount of applications and the amount of moving parts that you've got, all trying to work together to get a customer order out the door, is becoming it's it's ever increasing in its complexity in the amount of systems that you've got there. And to be honest with you, no one person can keep on top of that, can't keep all that knowledge in their head. Um, and no one person would want to. Nobody wants the responsibility of keeping an entire you know three million pound a day warehouse operation running because they know how all of the parts hang together. So I think in the first in the first kind of instance, automation is dri being driven through ever, compl ever increasingly complex systems that need to be supported and maintained. And, and the best way to do it is get them into a system, get them into an automation, a workflow that doesn't rely on an individual being there at 11 o'clock at night when, you know, something's broken and, and you need that person to be able to get you out of the trouble. You've got to be able to, to automate things and put things into a system and work 